and on to the derivative product rule that tells us how to differentiate a product of differentiable functions. If u and v are differentiable at x, if you like u of x and v of x are differentiable at variable x, then so is the product u times v or u of x times v of x. And the derivative of the product uv is the derivative of u times v plus u times the derivative of v. If we write it in terms of primes and suppress the uh, independent variable x, then the derivative of uv is u prime times v plus u times v prime. So we had properties of limits, like the limit of the product was the product of the limits. But derivatives, though based on limits, are a little more complicated when we differentiate a product. Apparently, this is how you differentiate a product. Straightforward, but a little more complicated than you might initially think. So let's go through a proof of that, because it's not terribly hard. It's a little uninspired in one, in one point. Um, and we'll take u and v to be differentiable. We want to show the product is differentiable and the derivative is, is given here. Now I've put square brackets around the things that are derivatives. I mean, arguably the whole thing is a derivative and you might with that protocol put square brackets around the whole thing. But I'm looking for a little pattern here uh, to illustrate how the product rule and some other rules behave. Um, so take u and v to be differentiable, define f of x to be the product u of x times v of x. We want to show f prime of x, the derivative of f is u of x v prime of x plus u prime of x v of x. Okay, uh, that's, that's what we have up here. The, the addition's done in a different order, of course that doesn't affect anything. The computation will produce this. Uh, that we're about to show. Oh, and then, of course, that's the same as what we have up here. Uh, the u prime is here, the v is here, the u is there, and the v prime is there. So everything's the same, just the additions in a different order. Okay, so definition of derivative, uh, always got to go back there when we do something new. What's new is uh, differentiating a product. Limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. The difference quotient for the function of interest the function of interest is u of x times v of x. So what do you get when you plug x plus h in that? You get u of x plus h times v of x plus h minus f of x. f of x is the product, u of x, v of x. I put parentheses around it to be careful. Um, I guess it's not entirely essential this time because there's no addition involved in this function, but good habit to put parentheses around when you're dealing with difference quotients. And this is the same as what we have down here. Now here's the unmotivated part. So what we've done is subtracted u of x plus h times v of x, and we've added u of x plus h times v of x. So we've added and subtracted the same thing. We really haven't done anything. We added zero, if you like. So you can't argue with the validity of it. And the first stuff, here it is, this last stuff in the denominator, minus u of x, v of x, it's, it's over here. There's the h in the denominator. So um, the books are balanced. That really is an equality. Why you would want to introduce this? Well, you shouldn't be totally overwhelmed that we've introduced um, maybe some x plus h stuff in some of this. We're trying to find difference quotients is what it amounts to. All right, so here's what we had from the previous slide. Now, uh, let's see, these first two terms share a factor of u of x plus h. Let's factor that out, leaving us with a v of x plus h minus v of x. Well, v of x plus h minus v of x, why that's the numerator of a difference quotient for the v function. The second pair of functions over here, uh, they share uh, a v of x. Let's factor the v of x out, leaving us with u of x plus h minus u of x. u of x plus h minus u of x, that's the numerator of a difference quotient for function u. And we still got the h in the denominator. Let's uh, split things up a little bit. Maybe skip a step of algebra. So we'll break it up over this plus sign in the numerator. So we've broken it up into a sum of two things. The uh, one over h is distributed on each of the pieces. So u of x plus h, u of x plus h v of x plus h minus v of x over h, there it is. v of x, v of x. u of x plus h minus u of x also over h, 
there it is. So let's split it up like that. Now you can see why we wanted to add that funny thing, add and subtract the funny thing upstairs. That's led us to difference quotients. Okay, uh, limit of the sum is sum of the limits. I guess it's theorem 2.1 part one, provided each of those constituent limits exist. Now we've got a, a limit of a product here. Limit of the product is the product of the limits, provided the constituent limits exist. Uh, also a part of theorem 2.1, I didn't document it right here. Uh, so we get the limit of the product is the product of the limits. And you see this V of X inside this limit? That's constant with respect to H. H changes, this doesn't. We can treat it as a constant and bring it out front constant multiple rule for limits. So we're using uh, product rule for limits. We're using constant multiple rules for limits. We're using the sum rule for limits. So it actually involves quite a bit of the limit properties. But we can bring the V of X out front. And what we're left with is a limit of a difference quotient. If that exists, it does, because it represents the derivative of V if the limit exists. If V is differentiable, V is differentiable, that was hypothesis. This is the derivative of U. Um, if U is differentiable, it is, that was hypothesis, that gives us the U prime of X. So we've got uh, V prime of X here, uh, V of X is here, U prime of X is here. What's up with this term? Limit as H approaches zero of U of X plus H. Can you just plug in the H equals zero? Uh, you can, if that function is continuous at x. Is the u function continuous at x? It's differentiable at x. Oh yeah, differentiable implies, whoops, differentiable implies continuous. That's theorem 2.1. So uh, it is continuous and we can evaluate that limit by substitution. So that leads us to, we started this with the derivative of the product. It's led us here. Uh, let's clean it up on a, on a new slide. So we took the derivative of the product, the derivative of u times v. Uh, this is what we had on the previous slide. And I said, let's, let's write in a different order. Uh, let's take the u prime of x, v of x, let's take this term first. Doesn't matter, but I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, and then, uh, gee, we could write it uh, as specifically the fact that f of x was u of x times v of x. We get this statement here. You know, it's a little bit prettier and cleaner if you just ignore the x's and say the derivative with respect to x of u and v, u times v, is u prime times v plus u times v prime. So to differentiate a product of two things, you take the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That's the rule, not really intuitive. There's a proof for it, so that's why it's the case. Let's do an example. Okay, so straightforward. It's just a matter of taking derivatives of parts and putting the pieces in the right place. Differentiate this product. Okay, a product of two polynomials. Uh, if I was stubborn, I could multiply this out and then just differentiate it as a polynomial, but we're trying to illustrate the product rule here. And I can make things more complicated where you'll have to use a product rule. For now, let's keep it not very complicated and illustrate the product rule. All right, derivative of the product would be the derivative of the first function, derivative with respect to x of the first function times the second function, plus the first function, rewrite the first function, and differentiate the second function. That's the product rule. I hadn't done any differentiating yet. If I did, the ddx stuff wouldn't be there. That means take the derivative. So this is what the product rule tells you the structure of the derivative is. Now let's do the differentiation. Uh, differentiate uh, 4x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4. Bring the exponent down, subtract 1 from the exponent. Let's speed that process up a little bit. That give us 12x squared. 3 times 4 is 12. Subtract 1 from 3, giving 2. Exponent down, that'll give us minus 10x to the 1. Minus 10x. Derivative of a constant is 0. That's gone. Put a plus zero in there if you like. Uh, don't do anything to the 7x squared minus x. Uh, don't do anything to this. And then multiply by the derivative of 7x squared minus x. Derivative of 7x squared would be 14x to the 1. Derivative of x would just be well, 1 with the negative sign brought along. If we don't multiply it out, there's a derivative. 
uh, we could simplify it. I tell you what, I like leaving it in that form. Uh, later on, chapter four, I think, we'll have to do things with the derivatives, and uh, well, that'll probably be a good time to simplify derivatives. For now, we, we found the derivative, and knock yourself out if you want to multiply it out. It reduces down to a fourth degree polynomial of some sort. Um, I don't really care what it is, unless I'm going to have to manipulate that. So I'm happy to leave the derivative just in, the, in this form. Not only that, but in this original function, I see this first part somewhere down here. There it is. There's the first part of that product. I see untouched the second part of the product. There it is right there. I see the derivative of the first part that would go here. Yeah, that's the derivative of that first polynomial. The derivative of the second polynomial, I see it over here. So when you use the product rule, starting with the product of two functions, you see each of those functions in that product again. There they both are. And you see each of their derivatives. Oh, there's both of the derivatives. So the product rule gives you a certain structure for the derivative of a product. Now I put the things that are derivatives down here in square brackets. I had a little bit of that habit in the examples we've done in this section as well. That allows me almost to draw a picture, more of this soon, draw a picture of the product rule. This is a derivative uh, and this is a derivative. Why is that? Because I put them in square brackets. Uh, word of warning, I made this notation up, so it doesn't mean anything to the rest of the world, but it will help you with the bookkeeping of taking derivatives. So these things are derivatives. And look where they're located. I bet you that's the derivative of the first and that's the second, that's the first and that's the derivative of the second, because that's how the product rule works. So here in the beginning, section 3.3 at least, um, probably not too big on simplifying derivatives and multiplying these things out. I'm interested in calculating derivatives and I'm pretty happy with that. You wanna check your answers with uh, the answers in the back of the book or the solutions manual. Yeah, you might have to multiply them out for that. As far as I'm concerned, and this goes probably test-wise for these kinds as well, I'm not that interested in simplifying. I'll leave them like this. I can actually check it a lot quicker if I leave it in this form because it's totally in the form of the product rule. Well, turns out we can differentiate quotients as well. There's a derivative quotient rule. It's also a little more complicated than you might initially think. The limit of the quotient is the quotient of the limits. If you don't get zero in the denominator and the constituent limits exist, derivatives of uh, quotients is more complicated. I'm not that surprised after seeing how complicated derivatives of products are. Claim is if u and v are differentiable at x, differentiable functions of x, v of x is not zero because we're gonna have it in the denominator. Then the quotient u divided by v, u of x divided by v of x is differentiable at x and the derivative of the quotient is this thing. We'll go through and prove it. Uh, you know, structurally, it's kind of like what we have with a product rule, a little bit. What it boils down to is, see, this time, instead of a first and a second, we've got a numerator and a denominator. It's the, uh, the derivative of the numerator, u prime, times the denominator, v, minus hmm, the, the, excuse me, the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, v prime, divided by the denominator squared. Unintuitive, but uh, up here in the numerator, that patterns, that's pretty similar to what we had in the product rule. It's not the same. Uh, we had a u prime v plus u v prime here. We got a u prime v minus a u v prime here. So the positive has become a negative when we go from product to quotient rule. And it's got something going on in the denominator. Well, that's not in the least bit an intuitive way to differentiate a quotient. So let's go through a proof. Just like with the proof of uh, the product rule, it, it'll involve a little trick and some factoring and evaluation of limits. Okay, so suppose u and v, or u of x and v of x are differentiable. To find f of x to be the quotient of those, u of x divided by v of x, we wanna show f prime of x then is this thing here. That's the claim. I just put the x's in it and wrote it uh, you know, along a single line in the way it's typeset. Well, back to the definition of derivative. Uh, I would prefer not to have to go there, but whenever we do something new, it's back to the definition of derivative. Uh, and this is something new, this is differentiating quotients. 
F prime of X is, well, it's the limit of the difference quotient. It's always the limit of the difference quotient if that exists. So what is F of X plus H? Well, F of X is U of X divided by V of X. So if I plug X plus H in wherever there's an X, we'll get U of X plus H divided by V of X plus H. Minus F of X for the rest of the difference quotient. Uh, okay, we'll subtract U of X divided by V of X and the whole thing's divided by H. That's the definition of derivative in terms of limits of difference quotients. Uh, this is just substitution for the F function, the U's and the V's. Okay, it's gonna get a little crowded uh, with this one. Let's take the division by H and write it as a one over H out front to eliminate the compound fraction. Uh, that'll leave us with this. Um, we wanna take a difference of these two. Okay, let's, um, uh, let's get a common denominator. It's two quotients, let's get a common denominator. The common denominator would be the product of these two. So we'll multiply this first one by V of X over V of X. That'll give us V of X, U of X plus H divided by uh, the common denominator. We'll multiply this one by V of X plus H over itself. And that'll give us a U of X, V of X plus H in the numerator over the common denominator. So get the common denominator, add them together. If this bugs you, pause the video and go through the arithmetic. It's correct. And uh, let's see, hadn't done anything objectionable yet, nothing uninspired. Uh, all I did was uh, write things, I substituted, wrote things differently, and um, got a common denominator. Picking up on the next slide, there's where we left off on the previous slide. Here's something uninspired, though you shouldn't be surprised to see this after going through the product rule. Let's uh, subtract V of X times U of X, and let's add V of X times U of X. Can't argue with the validity of it, I'm adding zero. So certainly we get an equality here. I haven't really done anything, but I haven't done anything in a very clever way. Uh, let's see, let's do some factoring. Let's factor uh, V of X out of the first two. Here's a V of X that leaves us with a U of X plus H and a, a minus U of X. You like the sound of that? So I'm looking for difference quotients. Over here, okay, this one's a little more complicated, and this is where the negative sign comes from. Let's factor a negative u of x out of these two. Factor a negative u of x out of this one, that'll leave you the v of x plus h. Factor a negative u of x out of this one, that'll leave a negative v of x. If you don't like that, take this negative u of x and distribute it back. Negative u of x times negative v of x is positive uh, u of x times v of x. So that's the way to factor it correctly. So let's factor it like that, being motivated. Uh, how again? To look for difference quotients. There's a piece of a difference quotient for U. There's a piece of a difference quotient for V. Didn't do anything to the denominator. Uh, yeah, didn't do anything to the denominator. Oops, an H mysteriously appeared there that needs to go. All right, let's take this one over H and distribute it through the numerator distributing over this subtraction here. So we'll get a one over H in this first piece, a one over H in the second piece. Uh, v of X will pull out front, U of X will pull out front. We're basically getting the H on this difference and this difference. So we produce explicitly difference quotients. Okay. Uh, Want to take that limit inside this quotient? Fine. Limit of the quotient is a quotient of the limits. Uh, if you don't get zero in the denominator. So we've taken the limit inside the numerator and the denominator, actually took the limit of the difference as the difference of the limits and broke this numerator up. You like the looks of this? You should. Here's the limit as H approaches zero of a difference quotient for U. Here's the limit as H approaches zero of a difference quotient for V. Those will be derivatives. There's some other stuff in the way, but we'll get it, out and get it moved around here on the next slide. Okay, here's where we left off. Um, v of X doesn't depend on H. It's constant with respect to H. It's not constant with respect to X, but X ain't changing, H is. So we can bring the V of X out front. Similarly, you can bring the U of X out front. We didn't change anything in the denominator. Good to go on that. Uh, constant multiple rule for limits, if you wanna justify this. These are constant with respect to H. 
So that's legitimate manipulation. And like we said, these are derivatives. So then we get V of X times U prime of X minus U of X times V prime of X. What happens in the denominator? Uh, I guess we, we also brought this V of X outside in the denominator. No H's, good to go. Ooh, this one we gotta leave inside the limit because it depends on H and H changes as it were. Can we substitute H equals zero in here? Um, you can substitute in limits when the function is continuous. Is V continuous? Yeah, uh, V is continuous because V is differentiable. If V is differentiable, then it's continuous. That's theorem 2.1. So yes, you can substitute in uh, H equals zero there. And that produces a V of X squared, quantity squared, if you like. So you may not like putting the two there. Uh, it's a common way to do it. I've done it differently down here. And so we have uh, the derivative of, of f, the derivative of the quotient, is derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. Exactly what we have up here. I think we've interchanged the orders on those, but that doesn't change anything. Or in terms of this square bracket notation, uh, derivative of the numerator times the denominator, oh, typo, that should read minus, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. Typo there, should have a minus on this one. And that's how the quotient rule works. Let's use it, okay? Differentiate uh, as a function of t, whatever, t squared minus one over t squared plus t minus two. That's a derivative of a quotient. Quotient rule says derivative of the numerator times denominator minus numerator times the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. So use the quotient rule to write it like this. Hadn't differentiated anything yet. Let's differentiate now. So we need to differentiate t squared minus one. That's two t. Need to differentiate t squared plus t minus two. That's two t plus one um, plus zero. Two t plus one. And there you go. Piece of cake. Um, what do you see? Uh, t squared minus one. You see that numerator? Yeah, there it is right there. I see it again. How about t squared plus t minus two? You see it again? Yeah, there it is. Actually, it's down here twice. Arguably three times because it's squared in the denominator. How about the derivatives of all these parts? You see the derivative of t squared minus one? That'd be two t, there it is. You sure that's a derivative? Uh-huh, because I put it in square brackets. Again, the square brackets are nothing but bookkeeping. I take my inspiration from the fact that it's common to write differentiation operators by putting square brackets around the quantity that's to be differentiated when the D stuff is out front, the differentiation operator stuff is out front. But the square brackets mean nothing to the rest of the world. To us, they tell us things that have been differentiated. And it makes this little thing we're doing now a little bit easier. Yeah, there's a derivative of the numerator. See the derivative of the denominator? Yeah, it's right there. That's in the right place to be the derivative of the denominator. Uh, it's definitely a derivative because of the square brackets, and it's the derivative of that thing. So, uh, again, gee, I, I'd prefer really not to simplify this. Uh, I could and multiply out the numerator and that's probably all we could accomplish. Uh, getting what a third degree polynomial in the numerator. Uh, maybe there's some cancellation, I don't care. Uh, let's leave the answer like this because with the square brackets, I can see where everything came from. I can quickly double check it. You're taking a test. You use these square brackets because you will be told to use the square brackets on any test. Uh, it makes it easier to check your work. So very mechanical stuff and you use a square bracket notation, it's easy to see where things came from. Back to the notes. Uh, we did this example. Let's elaborate on this square bracket stuff. Let me go a little, a little nuts on that. In this two examples we just did, one for the product rule and one for the quotient rule, we saw as follows, a derivative um, of the product was the derivative of the first, times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second if we didn't simplify. The derivative of the quotient was the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus numerator times the derivative of the denominator over denominator squared. Why is that? We went through the proof as to why both of those are correct. So 
This suggests my square bracket notation, which kind of lets you draw pictures of the product rule and the quotient rule, and another rule we'll see in the future. Then these just become kind of fill in the blank questions. So uh, I say we could draw a picture of the derivative product rule as follows. The derivative of the product of two things is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Now you gotta know what to put where. The product rule tells you that. But these little square brackets let me draw a picture of the product rule. And then I just fill in the appropriate derivatives in the appropriate places. Uh, I see what I could do immediately. You put anything here and anything there without thinking. I can put the second piece right there, the first piece right there, because that's where they go. And I'm like halfway through the problem. I hadn't done anything but write stuff down that I already knew. And then I got to put derivatives in the square brackets from the appropriate pieces. But drawing this picture lets me turn the derivative product rule really into just fill in the blank question, fill in the brackets questions, maybe more appropriate. Uh, quotient rule, same thing. A derivative of the quotient with the square brackets can be drawn as derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. It's fill in the blank. Uh, put derivatives in the square brackets. You have to know what goes where. The numerator goes first. Uh, a derivative of the numerator goes first times the denominator minus numerator times derivative of the denominator and so forth. Uh, notice that, if I can get them both on the screen at the same time, the picture of uh, the product rule, and it looks like the numerators mostly in the derivative of the quotient. The difference is we got a plus here and a minus here. So I'm looking for patterns to help you remember these things. So when we do this differentiation stuff, me and you, we're gonna use these square brackets, which come with the benefit of making it easy to tell where things came from. And I'll cut a deal with you. You use my square brackets, you won't have to simplify uh, as far as tests go. Uh, as far as checking your questions in the back of the book, there's none of this square bracket stuff in the book. I made this up. Um, you'll have to multiply out and try to simplify to try to capture the same version of the answer that the book has. You use my square bracket, so you will have the hang of taking derivatives. You'll be good at it. Um, yeah, it's bookkeeping. It's just what goes where is how I'm using the square bracket. So it streamlines that kind of thing. Uh, word of warning, I've warned you about this uh, before. Uh, the square brackets don't mean take the derivative of the stuff inside. They mean that these are derivatives of things. If you want to write take the derivative, then you don't use just the square brackets. You precede it by the differentiation operator. Take the derivative with respect to x of the stuff in the square brackets. Standard notation for take the derivative of, and when we do examples, I'll drag this into the solutions very often. Uh, I got the idea for square brackets from this notation for the differentiation operator. Um, in terms of rules of differentiation, you got one left, it's called a chain rule, and we'll do that in section 3.6, and we'll attack it with square brackets as well. Uh, for your information, uh, this is uh, from a paper I published many, many years ago uh, in, um, the kind of something called a college math journal, uh, sort of an education or mostly education oriented journal, still in print by the Mathematical Society, uh, the, uh, the, the Mathematical Association of America, the MAA. Uh, still in print, if you'll click there, it'll take you to a link of uh, this paper. It's only a couple pages long uh, that I have. And you're good to go to read all but the very last bit of that little paper. Um, it's got some chain rule stuff in it that we haven't done yet. Uh, might have a little bit of trigonometry stuff we haven't done yet as well. We will. We will soon. Uh, it was also reprinted in, in some book somewhere by the, by the MAA. Okay, uh, let's, do, uh, let's do number 48 here. Let's differentiate this thing. Is it a product or is it a quotient? Well, it's both. Um, I view it as a quotient with a product inside of it. It's certainly written in a way that suggests that. You can move some stuff around and view it as a product with a quotient inside. 
uh, may be this x squared plus x times this other quotient. The form of your answer would look a little bit different initially if you treated it as a product with a quotient in it versus a quotient with a product in it, but when all the dust settles, you'll get the correct answer either way. So let's do that. That combines quotient and product rule. Okay, like I said, I treat this as a quotient with a product in the numerator. Okay, so we'll take uh, the quotient rule. The quotient rule will come first. You want to differentiate a quotient. I've got this numerator. Okay, that's kind of big. I differentiate it with the product rule, but that's the numerator and that's a denominator. So we'll have the derivative of the numerator. Haven't differentiated yet. Not time for square brackets alone. It's time to talk about taking derivatives. Derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator divided by the denominator squared. Agreed? Quotient rule. Quotient rule gives you exactly that. Technical difficulties there. So let's do the differentiation. Okay. By having the square brackets, I can get a little reckless on the order. Let's differentiate the uh, easy stuff first. Uh, this is definitely the easy stuff. Let's differentiate that first. So that'll give us 4x cubed. So, so there's a 4x cubed. Now I put blue brackets in here. Not only do I have the quotient rule, but I've represented it in blue brackets. So uh, here's a square blue bracket. So there's derivative of the, of the numerator. We'll look at that in a second. There's a denominator minus, there's a numerator in those blue parentheses. There's a derivative of the denominator and there's a denominator squared. So definitely it's quotient rule stuff. So what we've left undone in the conversation is taking the derivative of the numerator. Well, the numerator is a product. All right, we'll use a product rule then. That'd be the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And you see right here exactly the square bracket representation of the product rule. Derivative of the first, it's what, 2x plus 1? 2x plus 1 times the second plus the first, x squared plus x, times the derivative of the second, 2x minus 1, plus 0 if you like. And without simplifying, there you go. Uh, I guarantee you the book expressed the answer in a more, well, actually a simpler version. Uh, but to get from what we have to what the book has is just, just a matter of multiplying out and simplifying if you can. And maybe putting it in a format that they like. Uh, but I'm happy with this as the derivative of that function. Uh, I see in blue brackets, I see a quotient rule and it's a quotient, ain't it? Hey, within that, I see a little, uh, little black square brackets that seem to indicate the use of a product rule. Yeah, because a numerator is a product of two things. So I see a product rule inside a quotient rule. We could have changed the form of this and thought of it differently. You'd get the same answer regardless. So I say don't simplify. Happy with this version right here. Uh, back to the notes. All right. The book doesn't use the square bracket form. And uh, they don't come up with them quite this involved. So uh, next page, I'm going to rotate the view by 90 degrees. Just couldn't get it to fit on the page. Let's take a derivative of this thing here. Okay, I don't, I'll magnify it as much as I can without losing anything. All right, let this be f of x, find its derivative. Okay, I wanna illustrate products and quotients because that's what we know how to differentiate. And so we've got a quotient, the numerator is a product of two polynomials, and the denominator, it's a product of two functions as well. One of them is an exponential function. You know how to differentiate an exponential function. So off to the races. So you want f prime of x. I had to even make the font smaller to get it to fit as is. That'd be the derivative of this thing here. Okay. As a quotient rule, we'd have the derivative of the numerator. There it is. Derivative of the numerator 
times the denominator, there's the denominator, which is itself a product, minus, minus the numerator, in parentheses, it's a product, times the derivative of the denominator, which is a product, divided by denominator squared. Product rule, uh, I'm sorry, quotient rule, tells you to do it in that format. Hadn't differentiated anything yet. Before I do, uh, to, to make it fit on one line, even though I rotated the page, uh, let's split this into, um, over this minus sign, split it into a difference. So we'll take this denominator, put it under the first stuff and the second stuff and write it as a difference. So all I've done is split it up into two terms. I normally wouldn't do that if I was writing on the whiteboard. I just go to town and uh, fill up the whiteboard with this stuff. But as it is, uh, let's break it up uh, over this minus sign. So I'll take care of this half and the other half. But what I get down here, it ought to look like when I paste it together, it just won't fit on one line, it ought to look like the quotient rule. Okay, so I'm splitting it up in, uh, in, onto two terms, so I can put them on two lines when I do the differentiation, just uh, logistics of typesetting, really. All right, so uh, I'm gonna start in an easy place. So there is no particularly easy place. Let's differentiate this. This is a derivative of the numerator. Okay, uh, it's a product of two functions. So to differentiate it, we'll use a product rule. So we'll have the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Let's magnify that. I've color coded this as well. And I don't know how well it's gonna come through on the video especially, but I have color coded the product rule So here we are, we're differentiating this product. We get the derivative of the first. There's the derivative of the first. Put it in square brackets, they're red, just to distinguish it from the square brackets that represent the quotient rule, times the second, and there's the second in red parentheses, plus, 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 product rule, add the first, okay, there's the first, just copy in, in red parentheses, times the derivative of the second. Derivative of this is what, 6x plus 7? 6x plus 7 in square brackets. And you see right here, you see in red brackets, if I highlight it, color probably changes, but there's a product rule. Right there highlighted as a product rule. Are you sure? Yeah, look at those, look at those square brackets in the, in the parentheses in red. That's exactly a picture of the product rule. Okay. So that takes care of this differentiation. Uh, we recopy that and recopy that. If I move over to the second term, it's a similar story. Quotient rule left us with differentiating this. Where are we here? The derivative of the denominator is the, the state we're in in terms of the quotient rule. And that itself is a product. So we'll have the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. I intentionally repeat that so it kind of sinks into your head. Okay, let's make it a little bit smaller so I can see the question and the answer at the same time. All right, so we'll have this first, yeah, that's what's written here in blue parentheses because it's undifferentiated, times the derivative of this denominator. Okay, it's a product rule, so we'll have Here's the blue brackets here and here that indicate we've got a derivative of a denominator. Uh, the red brackets, use red brackets again for product rule. We'll have the derivative of the first. So we're now having a product rule conversation within a quotient rule conversation. Derivative of the first, what's that? Um, uh, bring the five down, subtract one, it'd be 30x to the fourth minus 18x plus two. You should be good at differentiating polynomials. There you go, 30x to the fourth minus 18x plus two. There's a derivative of the first. The second, e to the x, okay, just write that down, plus the first, first, times the derivative of the second. Differentiate the e to the x. Oh, did I mess up? What's the derivative of e to the x? Uh, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So I did differentiate it. Can't you see? All I got 
to justify that as I put it in square brackets, you know me. Um, so that has been differentiated. It just, you know, exponential function is its own derivative. So you differentiate it, it doesn't change. But it's, it's been differentiated because the product rule told me to. And what we end up with, if you believe all those values, and you should, uh, is, and what I get for the whole numerator is this numerator minus this other half of the numerator, if I were to glue it together into a single expression. And look what you got. Um, derivative of the numerator starts with this blue bracket, ends with this one. There's a derivative of the numerator. Here's the denominator. Minus, this minus sign down here, down, down here where the cursor is. Uh, numerator in blue parentheses times the derivative of the denominator in blue square brackets divided by the denominator squared. So there's a quotient rule. Within that quotient rule, I see in red brackets a product rule. When we were differentiating the numerator, we use a product rule. Here we were differentiating the denominator, which is also a product, and we use the product rule there as well. So red brackets, product rule, more red brackets, another product rule, and those are within the blue brackets of a quotient rule. I can't think of any way to streamline that um, more than with the use of these brackets. You can see where everything came from. Uh, it gets pretty, pretty cumbersome when I just combine some products and quotients. We're going to do compositions of functions when we do the chain rule, and it can get even more outrageous, but it's totally mechanical. I couldn't make up something after you've done the chain rule. I couldn't make up something that you couldn't differentiate that's differentiable. Uh, you'll know a lot about differentiation. You know a bunch of it right now. You, the only thing you don't know is the chain rule.